Hello, dear students. In this session, we are going to take up the chapter, The Last Lesson by Alphonse Daudet. This chapter happens to be the first chapter from the main book, Flamingo. So, let's get started. Let's talk about the author, Alphonse Daudet. He was born on 13th May, 1840 at Nîmes, France. He passed away on 16th December, 1897 in Paris. He was the son of a silk manufacturer. He began writing poetry and fiction when he was 14. He was a genius. In fact, he had completed uh, his first fiction at this age only, at the age of 14. He was forced to seek uh, fortune in Paris. It was so because his parents uh, had suffered financial crunch. He couldn't have his higher education. He came to Paris. He started working as a school teacher. He couldn't continue as a teacher for long. He abandoned this job and uh, took to journalism. He became a journalist. He then was elevated to the post of an editor. He became an editor in the newspaper Figaro in Paris. He also worked as a secretary to the Duke of Morning. And this was the time when uh, Alphonse Daudet was introduced to the swanky, fashionable Paris life. He was married to Julia Allard in 1867. You know, when, when you read the stories, the poems, fictions written by Alphonse Daudet, you experience, you feel, you notice that amazing blend, that amazing amalgamation, that mixture of realism and humanism along with humor and sentiments in them. The present story, the last lesson, is also teeming with, overflowing with, with the sentiments, realism. He enlisted himself in the French army and fought in the war, in the Franco-Prussian war. Nobody could have described the sentiments of the people, the people from Alsace better, whose language had been snatched away from them, than the author Alphonse Daudet, because he himself was there in the war. He, he had perceived the sentiments of the people, how they felt when their own mother tongue was snatched away from them. How terribly distraught they were. How sad they were when they were imposed a foreign language. He was a true patriot. As we have already talked about, he fought in the war. And, you know, when he saw France being vanquished, defeated by Germany, he was badly shaken. This, this drubbing of France had a deep impact on him. Alphonse Daudet is one of the greatest literary figures in France. He is one of the highly honored persons in France. Umpteen number of institutions have been named after him. Let's talk about the background of the story. 
The story is set in the days of Franco-Prussian war. This war was fought in the year 1870-71. France was defeated uh, by Prussia, led by Bismarck. Prussia then consisted of uh, three nations. Germany. Germany was the leader of uh, leader in this Prussia. Germany, Poland, and some parts of Austria. Until 1871, the two districts, Alsace and uh, Lorraine, were ruled over by France. They were the French territories. But after the war, when France was defeated, they were annexed by Germans. This war was the result of an ambitious plan of Bismarck. The plan of unification of Germany. He wanted to bring loosely scattered states together to create a strong German Empire. And he could successfully do that. So at this time only, at the time of war, the events of the story, the last lesson, unfold. In a sense, you can say that the two districts of Alsace and Lorraine had been oscillating between the two countries. Uh, before 1871, they were the, they were the parts of uh, France. After they were, uh, France was defeated in the, in the war, they, they, were, they became German territories. And in the 20th century, again, they have been taken back by France. They are the France territories. Let's talk about Franco-Prussian War. To be more precise, Franco-Prussian War started in uh, started uh, on 19 July 1870 and uh, ended on 28th January 1871. This war is called Franco-Prussian War, Franco-German War, and in France it is called the War of 1870. As we have already discussed, the war was the result of uh, the great plan, German plan of unification, ambitious plan to expand German unification. And at the same time, French fears of the shift in the European balance of power. So, France went into the war with all the preparations. But somehow, the Prussians, the Germans had upper hand over france they had superior their, their army was superior in numbers the army was better trained and they had better leadership under bismarck and uh, moreover they made more effective use of the modern technology, railways and artillery. So be because of all these things, they were able to trounce France and annexed the two districts of this country, Alsace and Lorraine. So, let's talk about this uh, statesman, Otto von 
Bismarck, the German statesman. He, he is nicknamed the Iron Chancellor. Of course, he was the first Chancellor of Germany. But because of his policies, his decisions and his uh, achievements, he is called the Iron Chancellor. He masterminded, as we already talked about, he engineered the unification of Germany in 1871. He dominated Europe's affairs for 20 long years. He waged three wars against Denmark, Austria and France. Let's talk about the main theme and sub-themes. The last lesson. The chapter talks about the necessity to respect and learn one's own language first. We must respect our language and we must learn it. And there is inherent patriotism in it. Patriotism is inherent there in the story. If you take up the sub-themes, importance of education, the chapter talk, the story talks about, the story at the same time throws light on unfair practice of linguistic chauvinism. What is chauvinism? Chauvinism is an aggressive and unreasonable belief that your country is better than others. One's own country is better than others. Linguistic chauvinism, linguistic chauvinism, herein you, uh, you believe that your own language is superior to other languages, better than other languages and then you, without caring for the culture, the history, the literature of that particular language, you impose your language on those people, those non-speaking people non-speaking people of that language. And this is how you disrespect their own language. This is how you force those people to learn your language. This is linguistic chauvinism. You carry your pride in your language too far. And this is how uh, the Arrogance of colonizers is shown. The story in a wonderful, befitting way delineates the, uh, the universal phenomenon. Almost everybody, I mean, uh, this is very common that people have the habit of postponing uh, uh, their assignments, things. The story very nicely focuses on the tendency to value things more when they are gone. And it's very true. When the things are with us, we, uh, we probably do not really value them. But really we start valuing them when they are snatched away from us or when they are gone. But there is no use crying over spilt milk. We should be valuing things every day. We should not be waiting for any suitable time to value, to learn. Let's talk about the characters in the story. Little Franz, he is a student there in the school. And M. Hamill. M here stands for Masia. Masia. M O N S I E U R. Masia. This is a, you know, like a, in the British culture, we have the British culture has, you know, Mr., Mrs., Miss. I mean, these words are uh, suitably prefixed before the names. Similarly, in uh, 
French culture, before the name of a Frenchman, Monsieur is prefixed. So Monsieur, it, it is pronounced Monsieur, M O N S I E U R. So Monsieur Hamel, you don't really need to write Mr. M Hamel because it is already there. So when you're writing your answers, when you're uh, uh, retelling the story, narrating it, uh, don't really go for Mr. M Hamel. It is already uh, Monsieur, Mr. Hamel. Let's talk about the story now, the gist of the lesson. This is the story uh, is given on page number two in the main book. The story starts abruptly with the student, little Franz, shown to be reluctant to go to school that day. Why, he, why is he not willing to go to school that day? There could be a question, why was little Franz unwilling to go to school that day? So he was not ready to go to school. He was not willing. He was reluctant to go to school because his teacher, Monsieur Hamel, had given the class a homework of preparing participles. And Franz hadn't prepared anything about participles. So he was terribly scared that when he would go to school, he would be rebuked by the teacher. That's why he didn't want to go to school that day to escape scolding from his teacher. So he thinks of uh, skiving off, bunking off the school. He, tho he thought he, sh he, he should be running away and spend the day uh, outdoors. So this was one of the reasons, of course, he hadn't prepared anything about the participles. He was in the great dread of scolding, getting scolded by his teacher, Monsieur Hamel. But there were temptations also, which were so inviting, which were so enticing to make him spend the day outdoors. So what were those lures? They were... The day being warm and bright. The day was very warm and bright. Look, we are talking about uh, a story which takes place in France. France in Europe. Europe is a cold continent. I mean, for maximum months, uh, you know, they are cold countries. So, you know, whenever they have sunny days, they, they, they really welcome summer. They enjoy sunny days. So the day was sunny. Uh, the day was warm, the day was bright. So he thought that let's, uh, uh, that he thought that uh, he should be spending the day outdoors. He should enjoy the day. The birds were chopping at the edge of the woods. He wanted to enjoy those uh, uh, twitters of the birds. And even at the back of the sawmill. Sawmill means uh, a kind of factory where uh, the wood is cut into pieces with the help of uh, big machineries, big saws. So at the back of the sawmill, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. The... the uh, drilling maneuvers of the Prussian soldiers, he was interested. He he wanted to uh, see that too. So these three thing, uh, these three things were there which tempted him to spend the day outdoors. The day was warm and bright. The birds were chirping at, at the edge of the woods, and the drilling maneuvers of the Prussian soldiers at the back of the sawmill. So look, he was not ready with the participles. He of course was uh, very sure to get the scoldings from his teacher. And on the other hand, uh, there were uh, these uh, temptations. But despite all these things, he resisted them and continued to hurry off to school.
So while he was hurrying to school, now next paragraph on the same page, page number two, talks about the bulletin board. So when he was passing by the town hall, a building, uh, you know, a lot of in the town hall, you have lots of offices and other things also, maybe library, maybe there. Similarly, uh, other uh, offices can also be uh, there in the town hall. So there was a town hall and bulletin board was uh, there in the town hall. So he, when he was passing uh, through, he, he uh, passing by, he actually uh, saw a lot of people standing in front of the bulletin board. So he just wondered what could be the matter. Why so many people? Why this crowd is standing in front of the bulletin board? Because bulletin board had been a, had been a, an important uh, you know place thing for them. Why? Because this notice board had brought all the kinds of bad news for uh, these people, uh, the people of Alsace, for the last two years. The news like uh, the news of the lost battles the draft or even the orders of the commanding officer all such things news had come to them through the bulletin board remember we are talking about the time uh, when uh, the present day communication technology was uh, completely absent uh, this is actually uh, the late 19th century we are talking about so the things were conveyed to the people through such bulletin boards only. So, a huge gathering was in front of the bulletin board. So, he was wondering what could be the matter. And uh, while wondering only, he continued to, uh, you know, go to school because he was already very late. So, one Mr. Wachter was uh, standing in front of the bulletin board Vactor the blacksmith, he was standing in front of the bulletin board and he shouted at him saying that, hey bub, don't go so fast. Hey boy, don't go so fast. You have plenty of time to reach there. Look, he was already very late. He he thought that the man was ridiculing him for being very late to school. He really, feel, uh, he really felt very bad. Nonetheless, he continued to go to his school. So, Vector, who is, uh, who is Vector? Vector is a blacksmith. He is standing in front of the bulletin board. He is also looking, he is also reading a kind of news over there. And what is the news will be, that will be, you know, unfolded in the coming paragraph. So he very ironically tells little Franz to not to go to school so fast as he had plenty of time. Whereas he was already very late to school, you should remember that. Now, when he reaches school, he actually was uh, running to reach to school. Huh? That's why he was panting. He was out of breath. So when he reached the school, he found that the school was uh, quiet like Sunday morning. Otherwise, usually the scene was different. When the school started, it was altogether different every day. But that day, it was not so. The scenes which were usually there at the start of the school were not there that particular day. So he just was wondering what could be the matter, people in front of the bulletin board, the school quiet like Sunday morning and all that. So, what were the usual scenes when the school started? When the school started, great bustle could be heard out there in the great bustle was there in, in the classroom, and that could be heard out there in the street. Great noise, that uh, commotion was there in the classroom. At the start of the school, we are talking about. 
so these are the uh, we, so w- what we are discussing uh, exactly we are talking about the usual scenes at the start of the school so there was great bustle which could be heard out there in the street the sound of the opening and closing of the desks lessons being repeated in unison and you know the students had uh, put their hands over their ears to understand the things better and uh, the teachers great ruler rapping or hitting striking on the table so all these uh, you know uh, scenes were very common every day when the school started th- uh, these were very common scenes so let us see once again what were the uh, usual scenes great bustle was there in the class which could be heard out there in the street opening and closing of the desks the sound of uh, lesson being repeated in unison uh, the teachers great ruler hitting on the table and you know he had uh, counted on that commotion to get into the class but but he couldn't do so now because the school was uh, completely uh, serene peaceful he had thought of taking advantage of that halabaloo and get into the class without being noticed by the teacher or anybody else but that did, didn't happen why because of the unusual things happening over there so what was the first unusual thing the school was quiet like sunday morning as if it was a holiday there none nobody was there as if it was so you know uh, even he was uh, very much uh, embarrassed he was uh, blushed and frightened uh, when he was entering the class franz was blushed and uh, frightened when he was entering the class because uh, he was very late to school and he thought he would be uh, you know punished or reprimanded by the teacher for being late to class but to his great surprise he wasn't rebuked by the teacher in fact uh, he was uh, uh, with the very soft words was asked to go to his place by the teacher when he got over with his fear and he lifted his head he looked at his teacher what he found again there was one more surprise was waiting for him and what was that his teacher had donned had put on his sunday best a special uniform a special uniform of green coat frilled shirt and a black silk hat all embroidered and again this is you know uh, a kind of surprise for him because his teacher am hamel never wore that special uniform except on the days of prize and inspection it was neither the inspection day nor was it a prize day so again he was wondering what could be the matter people a lot of people in front of the bulletin board school being quiet like sunday morning teacher in special uniform teacher did not uh, scold him for being late everybody is so and everybody when he looked back everybody was so sad and the you know the biggest surprise the most surprising thing was still uh, in queue and what was that when he looked back he found the most surprising thing the most unusual thing he found over there what was that the old people of the village were sitting on the desks which were usually empty on the back in the back of the classroom so he just kept on wondering what could be the matter what could be the matter why all these 
you know, different things are there around him. Old Hauser, Mr. Hauser was there. He had brought even his primer, the elementary grammar book he had brought with him. The, uh, you know, old uh, former mayor was there. Postmaster was there. Among, and, and there were, among uh, that crowd, there were other people also from the village. They were standing at the back of the classroom along with the students. So while he was wondering, at that time, his teacher, Masir Hamill, made an announcement in the class. What was that announcement, that proclamation? He said, my dear children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. The new master comes tomorrow. This is your last French lesson. I want you to be very attentive. So this was the proclamation announcement made by Monsieur Hamel in the class. What was the announcement? That there would be no French teaching in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine from tomorrow. Instead, they would be taught German. Look, the Alsace and Lorraine, they are the French districts. So now their own language has been snatched away from them. And they have been imposed with the foreign language, the German. He announced that the new teacher, German teacher, would come tomorrow. And he wanted everybody to be very attentive. So this was the announcement. And because of this reason, all those changes were there, which Franz had noticed. You know, when this, when this uh, was announced in the class that there would be no French teaching from tomorrow, German would be taught, the teacher's words were like bolt from the blue for little Franz. He was, he was lightning struck. He felt as if he was lightning struck. The words took breath out of him. He was terribly stunned. He was petrified. He was shocked. And this, as soon as this announcement was made, he underwent a complete transformation of attitude towards studies and uh, his studies and language. At that time, he was you know, he was engulfed in the whirlpool of thoughts. He was having, uh, you know, plethora of thoughts, very many thoughts in his mind, feelings. His The first thing which he had was regret. He started regretting. Oh God. He didn't know his own language. And now that they are at that standing at that particular moment and place wherein their own language has been forcefully taken away from them. And they have, been, they have been imposed the foreign language. So he underwent a kind of transformation, a complete metamorphos metamorphosis in his attitude towards his studies and uh, 
teacher also so up to this in the first part so dear student uh, students please uh, understand cbse now uh, test students on the questions from the extract from the prose portion also earlier it uh, it was from only the poetry uh, poetry section but now extract from the prose section is also uh, asked the questions uh, are asked from the extract so please read the text very carefully so that you are in position to identify the text the lines and are able to answer all the questions comfortably and correctly so let's talk about the assignment uh, we have discussed uh, very many things in this first part so uh, i believe uh, now you are in a po you are in a position to answer all these questions which we have uh, uh, discussed already and the the questions now which are coming up uh, for you as assignment what had been put up on the bulletin board next question is what usually happens in uh, france class when the school begins so we have talked about the usual scenes okay great uh, bustle which could be heard out there in the street when the school started uh, the sound of the opening and the closing of desks um, lesson being repeated in unison teachers great ruler hitting the table and all these things so these are the usual scenes you can say when the school starts what was a uh, little franz expe uh, expected to be prepared with the for school that day he was expected to okay so you have already uh, you know learned everything so you are in uh, you are you are comfortable and uh, you are able to you know answer all these questions what changes did the order from berlin cause in the school that day for france for france what was more tempting than going to a school that day similarly uh, question number 7th we have uh, why had the village people come to a school that day you, you know you, why had the village people come to school that day this would be more clear in the second uh, video i'm telling you how was the teacher dressed that day and why did it surprise franz why was am hamble kind to franz even though he was late to school you know it very well and uh, finally who was vector what did he say to little franz you know uh, sometimes such things happen that we that we miss uh, you know minor uh, details or minor characters so when you read this story you always you you also you remember this vector uh, mr vector the blacksmith because if you have this question there in the exam though it appears to be very very easy but if you miss this detail you might not be able to uh, uh, answer the question correctly so that's why you are you know uh, advised strongly to read the text you have to read uh, line by line the entire story so these are uh, short answer type questions we have uh, long answer type question also in exam from the prose section for 6 marks uh, and these are long answer type questions uh, have to be answered in 120 to 150 words so prepare this portion very nicely and uh, i'll be back to you with the portion number 2 part 2 of this chapter thank you very much stay safe